Hello, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode, the pilot episode of What Did We Learn This Week? This is a show where I share technology tips, tricks, and short lessons that I've provided to my customers over the last week with you. Although, since you're my first audience, I'm going to be honest, some of these were not just from the last week. They've been from the last several weeks, uh, but that's not as uh, catchy of a slogan. <laughs> So most of you uh, should probably already know, but I'm Jonathan. Uh, I work for Minnesota State Services for the Blind. I'm a technology trainer. Uh, my clients range from low vision to totally blind, and uh, I help them stay independent through the use of technology like computers and tablets and smartphones. As I mentioned, this is our pilot episode and we're going to be trying things very differently than we have before. Uh, so this is not going to be like any other Zoom meeting you've probably attended. Just a little bit closer, I mentioned, to a, a webinar. So a few notes before we begin. Uh, this is going to be, since I said, this is going to be much closer to a webinar. That means all the attendees, all of you are going to be muted. Everybody who joins is going to be uh, muted by... Uh, uh, by default, uh, depending on how long we go, I'm going to have some Q&A uh, at the end. And at that point, I'll, uh, I'll unmute people and if people want to share something uh, or want to talk uh, uh, or ask a question. Uh, we'll open it up uh, and we'll just do the best we can with that portion. Um, some of you might be attending through the YouTube link I sent. Uh, that one is a little bit easier to get into than Zoom. Uh, and if you're attending on that, unfortunately, we can't uh, ask questions through that. That's just a place to, to view. Uh, but if you have any trouble with the Zoom connection at any point, uh, that's a vi viable one as well. Also, we mentioned uh, there's the uh, phone number that you can also call in uh, as well. Everything was in that uh, invitation. So in future uh, episodes, uh, if we keep this going on here, I'm going to allow everyone to ask questions ahead of time. Uh, that means if you have a topic suggestion or question that you think would be good for a show like this, uh, you can call or text our special What Did We Learn This Week question line. Uh, and uh, that number here, I'm also going to put it up on the screen, is 320-428-428. 0122. I'm going to repeat that slower. I'm actually going to repeat it two more times before we're done here. Uh, that number again is 320-428-0122. Uh, and when you call that number, if you do call that number, you're just going to get straight to an answering machine. You're going to hear my lovely voice. And it's going to ask you to leave a question or a topic suggestion. Uh, and then I'll be able to check that, read through those, and at next episode, cover as many of those topics and questions uh, as we can, or any ones that I think are relevant uh, or might be interested to the larger group. Uh, so one more time, that number is 320-428-0122. So for this episode, we're going to be covering three main topics. We're going to learn about the Radio Talking Book app available for iPhone and for Android. This is especially important because there's a big transition happening for Radio Talking Book and we'll talk about that in that section. Uh, you'll also learn how to get advanced weather information from Siri. Now you might know how to check your forecast but there's actually we can get a ton of more information from Siri. We just have to know what we can ask for and how to ask that. Uh, and then finally, we're going to co cover the topic of wireless charging, uh, which is uh, a cool gadget that I thought uh, I've been using for a while and I know uh, I've recommended it to some clients. And we'll go into detail what phones can use that, how does it work, and I'll do a whole demonstration for that as well. All right, well, that's our introduction and we're going to go on to our first segment here. And we're calling this section the App Corner. <laughs> so Minnesota State Services for the Blinds Communication Center, uh, which is located in St. Paul, produces an audio service called Radio Talking Book. Radio Talking Book is a free uh, news and information service, and it broadcasts 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to blind and low vision listeners across the entire state of Minnesota and even the nation. 
Uh, so they broadcast things like newspapers, uh, current magazines, periodicals, and also a wide variety of books. Now, for years, Minnesotans, Minnesotans have been listening to Radio Talking Book uh, live through special radios distributed by the state. But on October 1st, 2020, coming up sooner than you think, a Radio Talking Book is going to switch entirely from radio waves to streaming over the internet. So instead of needing to have a special radio in your home, you can listen to a service through any computer, a smartphone. They even have a, a ability to listen through the Amazon Echo smart speakers. They've actually added a skill for that. Now today, we're going to be teaching you about the Radio Talking Book app available on the iPhone and the Google Play Store for Android. Uh, but, of course, I'm going to be demonstrating um, today on an iPhone, and we're actually going to do this demonstration uh, twice. So the first time I'm going to go through it, I've actually got my phone set up. I've actually gone into the accessibility sections on my phone and increased the font size. So this is going to be a low, large print demonstration. So for those of you attending with the visuals, you can see what the large print looks like. And then I'm going to go back in through the app, and this time we're going to be doing it with voiceover so if you're a voiceover user how are you going to navigate this uh, and if you don't use voiceover for example or not sure what i mean uh, voiceover is apple's built-in screen reader it's designed so the totally blind can get around the iphone uh, even if you don't use voiceover it might be a good idea to pay attention to this section uh, because well it's also uh, useful for low vision as well so in the future, uh, we might even tackle voiceover in a lot more detail, maybe do an introduction uh, as well uh, for those of you who are curious and want to learn more about it, but maybe haven't tried it yet. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to get the Radio Talking Book app. Now, I already have it installed here, but I'm going to walk you through an easy way to find it. So what you're going to do, I'm going to show you on the iPhone here. If you're on an Android phone, you're going to open the Google Play Store and do basically the exact same thing. So let me switch over so you can see uh, my screen here. And I've got my iPhone. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search for Radio Talking book on the app store the nice thing is it's the only app uh, with uh, this name so it works really well to just do a Siri search so I'm going to activate Siri on my phone search the app store for radio talking book okay searching for radio talking book on the app store All right, so up comes the App Store. Uh, if you've navigated this before, you might notice that a lot of times the first app is an advertisement. So if you were voiceover, you just flick to the right to get past the advertisement. In this case, uh, I'm going to uh, just scroll up with my finger. And here is Radio Talking Book. Visually, it is an app with a red logo with the in it white RTB for Radio Talking Book. And usually you would tap or select the get button here. I'm just going to tap on open because I already have it here. So what we're going to see if we're looking at the large print version of this is uh, we're going to see an introduction uh, to the radio talking book service itself. And uh, who's it for? What's it about? Uh, you might notice mine's in large print. That's because I have set up large print in my accessibility settings. Uh, this applies exactly the same way in Android. If you go to their accessibility section and increase the font size, you'll see the font size in the Radio Talking Book app uh, will also uh, get larger as well. If I scroll down, I'm going to see a big blue play button. And if I give that a tap, the Christmas carols only faintly audible in the cold air of the hallway. Was it really this cold when you were growing up, I asked. I thought of our warm house back in Australia. So I just tapped that big blue stop button to stop the radio. Uh, but if I want to listen to uh, a live broadcast, that's all I have to do. Uh, but what I really like about this app is that I can also bring up a schedule for our forum the last uh, few weeks here. Uh, and to do that, I'm just going to scroll down and below the play button is a button that looks like a big blue triangle. I'm going to give this a tap. Up comes a list of the days of the week. And 
but let's see what's playing on Tuesday. So I'll tap on Tuesday and up comes a list. I'm going to scroll down here and why don't we check out uh, Money Matters. It played at 3 a.m. Uh, and the nice thing is I can play any of the recordings. So uh, even though it's at 3 a.m., I can still catch it today. So if I Date, tap on President it, Barack Obama addressing a union playing. crowd in Milwaukee renewed his push for Congress to raise the minimum wage in a buoyant accounting of the economy's revving performance. So I just tapped the pause button at the very top to uh, pause the recording. And when I'm done, I can just tap return to list to go to the list of, uh, of uh, different recordings that happened that week. Or I can tap return home and I'm back at the beginning. So it's that simple. Uh, and that's why I love this app so much. Uh, not too much to learn, and uh, it's completely free. So let me show you uh, exactly that ex same demo, but this time we're going to turn on voiceover, and we'll see how you would navigate this app uh, if you were totally blind. Uh, I'm going to use Siri to turn on voiceover on my phone. Turn on voiceover. Okay. Voiceover on. Car play. Okay. So, Department of Employment and Economic Development image. When I uh, turn on VoiceOver and I open the app, the first thing uh, that I'm going to see uh, or hear about, I should say, is the logo at the top letting you know that this is from the uh, Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development. I can flick to the right. Radio talking book broadcasts of print media to Minnesota and the nation are intended exclusively for people who are blind. Uh, and it will automatically uh, start uh, playing back, uh, well, it's reading me that description, I should say. Uh, and then um, if I keep looking to the right. Radio talking book live broadcast play button. I'll get to a button that says uh, play. So I'm just going to do a one finger double tap on that. Stop. Had already left a legacy stronger than those of many of the summer women immortalized in the House of Brides. Memories of Max frowning at the clay. So I just double tapped again to uh, stop or pause that recording. So I open the app, I flick to the right dolly here, play, I double tap, and I am running live. So now I also want to check out these uh, archive the recordings from previous in the week so if i keep looking to the right radio talking book archive daily listing double tap to select a day of the week i'll get to a button that says double tap to select the day of the week i'll double tap sunday button sunday button it brings up a list i can flick to the right monday button tuesday button let's check out tuesday as well i'm going to double tap on tuesday Tuesday's archive list. Now I can flick to the right and hear what was playing on Tuesday. Tuesday's archive, 1 a.m., Twin Cities, 2 a.m., Consumers Advocate. Now let's do another nighttime one here. This is Consumers Advocate. It originally aired at uh, 2 a.m. Let's double tap on that. Pause button. Asky of the Soviet Union resigned before the resumption of Game 21. An arson fire at the Bluebird Cafe in Montreal, Canada claimed 37 lives. In 1983, 269 play. So I just double tapped again, uh, and that paused the recording. Uh, and then if I flick to the right, I'll hear... Return to list button. Return to list. Return home button. And return home. I can double tap to return home. Department of Employment and Economic Development. It and I'm back at the beginning of the app. It really is a very simple app. Uh, and upcoming in October, this will be uh, one of the only ways to listen uh, to the radio talking book. You'll need to, well, uh, you'll be able to use it on a phone. Uh, you can also visit the radio talking book webpage to listen to it on the computer, where they also have a Amazon skill for that. And if people are interested, uh, uh, call us in on our call number, say, give us a demonstration on the Echo, and we'll. I'll do one of those as well. So that is the Radio Talking Book app. So with that, I think we're going to go on to our next topic, uh, which is, oh, I'm trying to get my music to play here. I don't think anybody said maybe they are not hearing it here, but. Uh, 
All right, now we're going to be t get talking about some Siri tips and specifically how to get advanced weather forecasts. Um, so to Siri, you might already know, uh, can be used to ask a large variety of questions on a large variety of, question of topics as well. And today we're going to go deep uh, with some advanced questions uh, that we can ask Siri specifically regarding uh, the weather. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to be using an iPhone 11 today, and I'm going to be activating Siri by holding down the oh, by holding down the uh, side button on my phone. Uh, if you have an iPhone with a physical button, you can hold that down, uh, or you can use the Hey followed by the word Siri. I'm being careful just in case anybody's got me on speakerphone. I don't want to set up your devices here, uh, but you can use the Hey followed by Siri command uh, to. Uh, Tell your device to start listening, and you can use any of these voice commands here. Um, I'm also going to uh, be leaving VoiceOver on for this portion. You might find with VoiceOver on with iPhone, it's a little bit more uh, talkative here. And we also might get some crosstalk here, but uh, uh, I think uh, I think it'll be better if uh, if I leave it on here, uh, and we'll just deal with that. Uh, you might already know that you can get the current weather from Siri uh, by asking it pretty straight up. What's the weather forecast today? Listen button. It's currently partly cloudy and 68 degrees. Expect clear skies starting in the afternoon. Temperatures are heading down from 70 degrees to 55 tonight. All right. So I give some pretty good, decent detail about the weather today. Uh, but I can get in a lot more specific if I ask more specific questions. So uh, you might have so as you might have guessed, we can ask about the weather tomorrow. What's the forecast for tomorrow? Expect partly cloudy skies tomorrow. The high will be 73 degrees and the low will be 52. It truly is becoming fall, isn't it? Those really nice temperatures that we uh, that we hear about. Uh, so uh, let's get more specific, right? Those are some real softball ones, but what if we are planning uh, to go on a walk? Uh, I can ask a question like, will it rain in the next hour? It doesn't look like it's going to rain now to 3.23 p.m. Okay. What's the high this week? The high temperature will be 80 degrees this week. All right, so now we're getting a little bit more focused. We're going in more detailed. Well, We've got a nice three-day weekend coming up here. Let's find out if it's going to be a good uh, good weather to barbecue. What's the forecast for this weekend? Expect mostly clear skies this weekend. Daytime temperatures will start around 77 degrees and will head up to 82 with overnight lows around 59. So it really does sound like a good time to get out the barbecue. Um, well, we are making plans here. Let's find out... Uh, what will the temperature be at 11 p.m. tonight? It should be about 55 degrees tonight. Ah, good. Uh, so let's get even more granular, for example, here, uh, and get some additional details. What's the current wind speed? Listen, button. The wind's blowing at 18 miles per hour. West-northwest right now. Yeah, it's actually... It felt like it's been really intense here. I had the window open earlier and uh, with this microphone going, all I could hear was the wind. What is the barometric pressure? The barometric pressure is currently 29.85 inches of mercury. All right, so now I can get the barometric pressure and this is gonna affect some people. It does actually affect their health. I've got 29.85 uh, uh, is the current rating, uh, I think the average or the a normal day is about 30, so it's a little bit lower than average. Uh, but if you get those high pressure days, some people, you know, with certain health conditions, uh, that can be pretty intense. And so it's nice to be able to look that up before going outside. Uh, if you're anything like me, I actually sunburn very easily. And so this next one I actually find uh, surprisingly helpful. What's the UV index today? The UV index will be up to six today. Yeah, I swear if I just walk out in the sun, I can burn. The, the, the beach is a scary, scary 
uh, situation for me sometimes here. Uh, so if you do see me out there, uh, you can you can usually smell or see a lot of suntan lotion uh, if I'm going to be going to the beach. What is the humidity? The humidity will be up to 64% today. So getting a lot of great details. And like I said, this can affect whether or not we want to be going outside. Or it can even affect our plans. Since we are moving into falls, the days are starting to get shorter. And it's easy to lose track of when the sun actually goes down. When is sunset today? Sunset will be at 7.46 p.m. today. And if you check, it's going to get a little bit earlier every day, right? Uh, so one more question about health related ones. Uh, what is the current air quality index? The air quality is good at 20 right now. So this will warn me if uh, the air quality is lower. This would be particularly good if you're in California where we're in the time of year where there's wildfires all the time that can affect that quality, but also a heavy amount of humidity, potential smog, things like that can affect people's lungs. And we can actually get an idea of whether or not the air quality is good in our area. Uh, and so that uses the air quality index uh, for your area and uh, uh, and it will actually warn you if it's good or bad ahead of time because I don't always know exactly what these numbers mean. <laughs> uh, so that's how we can get some real in-depth weather information. And we could also say, uh, what is the weather like in Paris? It's currently clear and 75 degrees in Paris, France. Temperatures will be fairly consistent, averaging about 75 degrees. All right, so I can ask where, I can ask the date, I can ask for the air quality index, I can ask for the wind speed. As you can see, I can get a lot of information from Siri. I just have to ask. So if I just ask for the forecast and that's all I ever do, uh, that'll be helpful to give me the highs and the lows and whether it's, whether it's gonna rain, but these are so much more targeted and I find them very, very uh, useful uh, to know how to do. Uh, the nice thing is, sort of like Radio Talking Book, it's actually a fairly simple topic. We just got to practice it, and it works pretty good. The one thing I will note is that um, if you try to combine some of these together, you might get a surprise. I'll give you an example here. What's the weather like tomorrow? Looks like it will be partly cloudy tomorrow. The high will be 73 degrees, and the low will be 52. So I just asked her about the weather tomorrow. If I said... What's the barometric pressure? I can't get the barometric pressure for tomorrow, but currently it's 29.85 inches of mercury. Ah, she did a better job for me this time. If you ask a question like, what's the weather like tomorrow? And then you immediately ask a follow-up question. Siri uh, assumes you're actually referring to weather again tomorrow. So if I asked, will it rain? She's going to give me the rain information for tomorrow because we just asked about the weather tomorrow. So if we sometimes if we ask a follow-up question after asking about weather in the future, Siri will come back and say, oh, I can only tell you that information for what's going right now. So she's not going to know the weather, the air quality index, the current wind speed or the barometric pressure. And sometimes she'll just tell, I can't answer that till tomorrow. If uh, the schedules, I can't answer that information uh, because I can only give you the current weather information. Uh, so if that does happen, uh, what you can do is either press the home button on your phone. That'll cancel out your current interaction with Siri. And you can ask about the wind speed and the pressure and all that information then. Or you can ask Siri a question about right now, what's going on right now, and then your follow-up questions can be about that. Uh, so I just wanna warn you about that, just in case you think these are fun and you start doing all of them, and then uh, uh, you start not getting the answers you want because you asked about tomorrow, and then your follow-up question is about something she could only answer for you today. So just a funny little thing and a good thing worth knowing here. All right, well, that ends our section on Siri. And now I'm going to transition into our next section that I'm calling Good Gadgets. All right, and none of these uh, topic and names are uh, in. Uh, are in stone. If you got a great topic name and you want to make a suggestion, also give us a call at our number or uh, 
or you can send me an email as well. Uh, and uh, I'm very open to suggestions. So we're going to be talking, today's specific gadget is going to be the wireless charger. And what I'm holding up in front of the camera right now is a small black square. I'd say it's about the size of a coaster, but uh, it's a little bit thicker, about a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, I might say like a quarter, it's like a hockey puck, it's black, but it's quite a bit thinner than that. So despite being called a wireless charger, uh, those of you using the visuals might be able to see there's actually a wire coming out of this uh, that plugs into the wall. So the wireless means you don't have to plug it uh, directly into the phone. So with one of these chargers, I can, play, I can charge my phone by placing it on top of the charger. There's no need to struggle plugging a tiny little cable into the tiny little port that they put on all of these phones. So you might be wondering, how does that even work? And would it even work with my phone in the first place? Well, a few years ago, smartphone manufacturers started ins installing receivers for wireless charging into some of their phones. So for example, uh, Apple started putting these receivers in all of their phones, starting with the iPhone 8. So if you have an iPhone 8, 8S, 10, 10S, XR, or newer, or the newest iPhone SE, not the original one, but the one that came out this year, uh, if you have one of those, then your phone has the receiver built in. It can support wireless charging. Uh, Samsung, for example, has been including receivers in a variety of their phones for years. Uh, this includes the most, uh, most of the S models starting from the 6S and newer. And they've also included them in a various other models, their Galaxy phones, their, uh, the, the one that folds out. Uh, if you're not sure if your phone has wireless charging, uh, you might want to contact uh, the company you purchased the phone from and ask. So if you got it from Verizon or Sprint, uh, give them a call up, let them know the model of the phone, and they can usually get you that answer pretty quickly. Uh, or if you get it from Best Buy or, or Target, uh, they can usually look that up for you. It's also available on the web, but uh, I find that a phone call usually solves it a lot faster than struggling around browsing through a ton of web pages. Uh, so you look up, you find out, oh, I've got the iPhone 8, oh, I've got the 6, uh, I mean, I've got the S7, uh, or you call your manufacturer and you go, you've got a receiver for this. How does this actually work? So wireless charging uses an electromagnetic uh, ooh, excuse me uses an electromagnetic field to transfer energy from the charger to a receiver in your device. Uh, so inside of the, this charger here is an induction coil and it generates an alternating electromagnetic field. The phone has a receiver coil that converts that energy into electricity. To charge your phone. Now that may seem and sound pretty high tech, but I actually have owned a electric toothbrush. Uh, I actually bought one. Uh, I actually had an electric toothbrush uh, way back in the 90s uh, that sat on a charger, and it's the exact same technology. It's actually been around for a very long time. I've just only recently put it into phones. Uh, so in order for this to work, the charger and the phone, so that, that charger itself and the receiver coil need to be in very close proximity to each other. Uh, so that's why when we're using this, we usually place this uh, directly on top of the charger. Uh, and charging uh, can actually work through most cases. Um, as long as those cases aren't made out of metal, for example. So my iPhone case uh, is a leather case, uh, and it works great uh, with, without having to take the phone out. Um, if you do have a phone uh, with a metal case or a metal lined case, or it has a special accessory in the back, or like one of those uh, pop sockets, which make the phone easier to, uh, to hold on to, this might not work because it might put too much distance between the phone and the charger. Um, 
Also, these wireless chargers, they don't typically come with the phone. In fact, I don't know of any phones that come with a wireless charger in the box. Most of them just come with the cable and the wall outlet. So if there's something that you do want to try, you are going to have to usually buy one yourself uh, from any vendor that sells electronics uh, like Target, uh, Best Buy, uh, also from your phone carrier, Verizon or Sprint stores carry these. Uh, and it doesn't have to be one that's branded with your phone. For instance, Samsung uh, makes phones and they make wireless chargers, uh, but you don't need to use a Samsung charger with a Samsung phone. Um, for instance, this one I got here uh, is like a Spigen. I don't even know the name of it. I don't even know exactly how to say it. Uh, I found it online. I got it from Amazon uh, a few years ago, uh, and I've been using it with uh, with my phones ever since. So once I got the 8, I got excited, and I got uh, this little charger here. It's been working great for years. Uh, you may find, if you are looking at these different chargers, uh, you may see a standard written on some of them uh, that's written out with a capital Q and a lowercase i. Uh, your screen reader might refer to it as a qui key or something like that. It's technically pronounced chi, uh, and it's literally uh, literally named after chi. What you'd expect it to, what you'd expect that to me? So that invisible force, your inner chi. Uh, there were two competing wireless charging standards out there for a while. It's sort of like the VHS Betamax fight. Uh, but a few years ago, Qi won that battle. And now pretty much all wireless chargers out for sale uh, nowadays are, are Qi chargers. Uh, and they'll work with any of the phones I mentioned uh, and pretty much any of the phones uh, that have this wireless charging. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about seeing that chi anymore. Uh, you can usually get anything that says wireless charging and it'll work. So I tend to go to bed a little bit later than my wife, sometimes a lot later. I'm a bit of a night owl sometimes. Uh, so when I enter the bedroom, all the lights are off and I have to make my way to the side of the bed. I tend to then feel around the top of the nightstand and find my wireless charger. Uh, so I feel that for that little puck. Uh, and then I place my phone screen side up on top of the charger. And when it makes that connection, the screen will turn on and a sound will play. And if you have voiceover, uh, you will generally make an announcement as well. So let me show you that. I'm going to place my phone on my charger. Um, you might not have been able to hear it because I've got it a distance from my microphone here, but it said 100% charged. So the phone sat on the charger, the screen turned on, it announced that uh, what the current charging rate is. Right now it's 100% because I've had this plugged in uh, this whole time. Uh, but if it was lowered 20%, 30%, and it makes that uh, that announcement. Uh, so I do uh, have to put my phone uh, pretty centered on that charger for it to work. Uh, so uh, I would not be uh, telling the truth if I didn't have to fiddle around sometimes, grab this, move it around a little bit until I notice the light come on, if you've got voiceover until it announces uh, that it's charging, or uh, it will also make uh, a sound. Uh, and it's much easier than fiddling around uh, and trying to figure out how to plug that uh, that tiny cable uh, into the bottom of the phone at night. And I do like that the iPhone one does work in either direction, uh, but I always found like half the time I'm trying to plug this in at night, I actually end up sticking the charger in between my case and the phone instead because it, well, like it, for some reason it fits and I go, great. Uh, and so I really like having this wireless charger. I find it a lot easier to place, uh, just place my charger down. I place my phone down on top of the charger. Uh, uh, and so that is uh, wireless wireless charging. So we're not gonna go into details with how electromagnetic fields work uh, because quite frankly, I don't know. Uh, but uh, that is, uh, but you don't need to know that in order to use the wireless charging. Just place your phone on top of the charger and it is good to go. All right, that's the base of charging and that actually covers our three main topics for today. Uh, so I'm going to transition now into uh, into our Q&A session here, section here. For anybody who has questions about any of the topics that we covered uh, today, uh, if you have a general question 
or also if you have some cool thing you recently learned that you want to share with everybody. Uh, so we're going to transition to Q&A here. It's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, I know a bunch of people are on the phone here. We don't have a huge group. So I'm going to go ahead and be a little bit bold and I'm going to unmute everybody in just a moment. Uh, so if anybody wants to speak, just try not to speak on top of each other. I may mute and unmute people, but I just don't want to deal with the hands up and all that other stuff that goes along with it. So we're going to transition my last visual transition here uh, to our Q&A. Or what did you learn uh, this week? And with that, hold on here. Now, I, pre I rehearsed every part of this except for this part here. So I'm going to lose some of the real slick, fast, streamlined stuff here. And I'm going to uh, uh, unmute everybody here. And I'm going to hope that... Uh, let's see here. Loud participants. Oops. Oh, I hit the exact opposite. I actually uh, muted everybody here. So let me... Try to mute every, unmute everybody here. So uh, if you are trying to connect and you would like to unmute uh, yourself, uh, we're going. you're going to want to use, uh, if you're on a Mac, uh, the uh, con command shift A, I believe it's alt shift A on Windows uh, or on the phone. Uh, I haven't unmuted here before. So I'm going to ask people to unmute and we'll see if that ends up working here. And if it does not, I'm going to... Hey, um, so if hey. anybody if anybody's trying to speak right now, one thing I figured out the first time I ever did a Zoom was um, you have to actually also unmute yourself after the host unmutes you. So a lot of people start talking and they're like, why isn't he hearing me? So you'll get a box either saying stay muted or unmute, um, or you'll have to actually unmute yourself after he unmutes you. Thank you so much, Byron, for uh, uh, sharing oh. that. I, I was in a pen because I, I was uh, helping somebody do a, a show on ACB radio. And so we unmuted our guest and I'm sitting there going, why are we not hearing the guest? And the guest is like, why aren't they hearing me? <laughs> <laughs> and you can shift, you can get to that by um, shift all tabbing or tabbing to get to that unmute button. Did you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, we did hear that. Sorry about that. Uh, and then there is a keyboard <laughs> command, Alt Alt M, uh, if you're on Windows. Uh, Windows will uh, mute and unmute yourself uh, as well. Well, Jonathan, I could I could share a little something that I um, I, I, I have not really messed all that much with Google, you know, G Suite stuff. Um, mm -hmm. you know, like Google Docs and Google Sheets and stuff like that. Um, but during the ACB convention, we, um, we were asked to give a presentation on Google Forms. So I really boned up on all things Google Forms. And so um, one of the, or, or Google Documents in general. So one of the things is there is an accessibility keyboard command that will make the uh, page a lot more accessible for you. So if you're trying to edit or work on a spreadsheet or a Word document, if you do alt control and the letter Z, um, that will activate the accessibility mode. So then you'll have a menu across the top of your screen, you know, like file, edit, view, et cetera. Um, and you'll be able to tab through all the different on-screen um, elements. And then if you're trying to actually read a document, say an office document of some sort, um, like, a, like a word processor document, if you can't read it after doing alt control Z, as in zebra, then do insert Z and that will turn off the virtual viewer and then you should be able to look through the document and actually edit it. Use your up, down, left, right arrows and things like that. Um, I'm actually planning on hopefully doing some uh, presentations about Google Documents because I'm really diving into it uh, head, you know, heavily now. So if you're ever looking for a contributor, I'd be happy to talk about Google Documents as I learn how to use it. Anybody who's you know curious, what? oh, go ahead. Do you know an alternative for if you don't have an insert button? If you don't have an insert, oh, Jonathan, do you want to? 
do you want to cover that one or should I do um, it? Well, I should also also say we do have a couple of uh, Mac users who are attending. I wasn't sure if you knew the uh, if there was a, a a Mac equivalent of that keyboard command. You know, I'm absolutely sure there is, but I don't know what it is because I don't currently have a Mac, so I have not really um, boned up on how to do Google Documents with a Mac. It's, However, it's actually Command Shift Z. Command Shift Z. Yeah. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. That totally makes sense. Yeah. Oh, um, good. Well, yeah, that, that's key. Uh, so yeah, as far as the, as, as if you don't have an insert key, some laptops don't, for example, or if you, um, oh wait, no, as far as the insert key, um, I know some laptops don't, uh, we're using, when you're referring to the insert key, is, is this specifically a JAWS command or are you, or is it just the insert key in general, Byron? I don't mean to get too detailed here, but. Yeah, so the insert Z uh, to turn off the virtual cursor, that's specifically a JAWS command. Oh, yes. um, but you know, if you're using NVDA or JAWS um, or any other Windows screen reader, a lot of the times they have what's called a modifier key. Um, so that would be like your alt key, your control key, your shift key, your insert key, plus another key, whatever, whatever that modifier key is, plus another key to, uh, to make a certain command happen. So if you don't have an insert key on your system, then you can always assign a different key to be that modifier key. And a lot of computers running JAWS or uh, NVDA, they would use the caps lock key as your, as, your, uh, as your NVDA key or your JAWS key. That's why they often just say in, you know, JAWS and then the letter yeah. or the number that you're supposed to do. Yeah, and you can usually, during the startup phase, when you first set up those programs, they'll ask you, you know, do you want a laptop setup or a desktop setup? And if you choose, like, the laptop setup, it usually assumes you want to use the caps lock key as the, uh, as, as, as the, uh, uh, also as the, in, as the insert key. Uh, and uh, if you're on a Mac, uh, you can even, they use the VO key, uh, which is control and, uh, uh, control and option, and you can also set that as caps lock. Uh, by going into the voiceover settings. I was mentally getting stuck, and this is something I learned that I think is useful as well, is uh, I've had quite a few people with laptops who have wanted to use the application key, um, which usually brings up like a, a sub menu on Windows. So if you're navigating through, it's like a right click. Uh, and I've had quite a few people recently who have laptops or keyboards that actually don't have that key. Um, and they want to be able to do functions that use the application or program key. Uh, and I recently, I, I always forget, I have it written down because for some reason it won't stick in my head, but that's shift F10 will also function like the application key. Just when we're talking about alternative keys. Uh, that was one that uh, I end up running into all the time with my clients. Maybe that could be a topic you could address at some point just because a lot of times the descriptions for shortcut keys are very specific to Windows because it's assumed that people are using JAWS, but I think it would be an interesting topic. Yeah, I have a real mix uh, of clients who use various, uh, you know, Macs or PCs. And uh, yeah, that is, a, that is a pretty common question is, is they'll have friends share a keyboard command. I love keyboard commands. I love sharing keyboard commands. Uh, and they'll want to know what's the Mac version of this, what's the Windows version of this, and, and so forth. And usually they're similar, but I think that we could do a best of, best of favorite keyboard commands. Um, of course, I don't know. That's a little bit like, I don't know for you, Byron, if you're the same way. It's a little bit like asking who's your favorite child. I, I'm a keyboard key, keyboard command key uh, fanatic. When I worked, uh, before I even knew how to use my first screen reader, uh, I worked at, uh, for Apple retail. And this was, this was back when the big thing was the iPod. There was no iPhone, there was no iPad. And uh, we were, I was one of the, I had one of these jobs where our title was creative and I used to do lessons and workshops, kids camps and things like that. And it was a, a badge of honor to see who could get around the computer uh, without using the mouse. Everything was keyboard commands, keyboard commands, everything. Uh, which luckily when I needed, to, when voiceover first came out for the Mac and I needed to learn it, I already knew how to get around with the keyboard. But I love keyboard commands. My, uh, my wife, uh, 
she works uh, in a job where she's in Microsoft Excel all the time. And she's, when I am trying to do something in Excel and I go, oh, I wish there was a key command to do this. Uh, she's like my little encyclopedia. And so I love keyboard commands. I love that. <laughs> um, you know, John, one thing I wanted to mention real quick, you, you were talking about wireless chargers and um, yeah. so you guys can see my video now. Um, I have a wireless charger made by Samsung. And so I'm showing it for those who are looking at the screen um, or who can see it, this, this charger is not flat like yours. It's actually angled. And it has a little shelf along the bottom here. So when I place my phone, see, I love having two phones now. When I place my phone on the charger, there's a little shelf here. And so um, it, it vibrates too when you, when you actually make contact with the surface. It, it'll vibrate, so if you're hard of hearing and you can't, you can't hear the sound it makes, your phone will vibrate um, when it hits the pad. But see how this thing, it rests on the shelf? So it's very difficult to not get a good charge because you, there's only really one way to put it on there um, and it makes pretty good contact. Yeah, Samsung makes really good. I bought this, I bought mine, um, you know, it's a couple of years ago, but those Samsung ones, especially the ones like you were showing where the, uh, uh, where it's on a little shelf. Uh, those ones are really good. What kind of price for the chargers? Do you remember how much you paid for yours, Byron? I think mine was like 25. Yeah, uh, around anywhere between 25 and 35. Yeah, they're not too bad. Uh, the one thing I, uh, that was funny about mine, and I don't know if this was the same at all uh, for, for yours, Byron, and I was just going online. Anchor also makes really good chargers, and they've got, they've got them uh, for like $15 now. The one thing that's funny about these chargers is they'll come with the little unit itself, and they'll come with a cable, uh, but it won't come with that little power brick to plug into the wall. Right. You'll just have the charger and the cable. And then if you, you know, just take your phone's charging brick, plug it into that. Or if you've got an extra one, you can do that. But if you, if you're not replacing uh, your plugged in one, uh, you might also have to buy one of those little wall, uh, those little power bricks that the USB plugs into. So it might cost just a little bit extra. Um, I don't know if the Samsung one came that way, but uh, a lot of the really inexpensive ones, they expect you to have your own power brick. For those of you who are actually in the office um, right now, and I, I know that that's not most of us, but uh, in my office, there's actually another, I have two, I have one in my office and one here at home. Um, so if you want to look at the Samsung charger, it's sitting on my desk at the office um, and you could try to charge your phone, you know, and see how it works. Um, mine did come with a little brick, which is good, but you know, those bricks are so common and, and everyone has a, a smartphone these days um, and, and lots of other devices that have a USB brick. So I'm sure most of us have spares that, that you can just uh, you know grab one from some old device you don't use anymore. Yeah, that's what I'm doing with mine. I just had an extra one. Of course, I have a lot of gadgets. Uh, I'm actually sitting in front. I'm very curious. You got two phones with you, Byron, and you got, I know you got that iPad. I know you got that laptop. How many computers, quote unquote computers, do you have, on, you have in front of you right now? Uh, let's see. I got my desktop. I got my laptop. I got my work laptop. I got my spare laptop. Um, so I have, I have, I guess four like legit computers, but then I also have a Chromebook and I also have, you know, uh, an Android tablet and an iPad and two iPhones and an Android phone. So I got way too many gadgets here. I'm in the same, uh, I'm in the same boat. I'm staring in front of, I've got uh, my, my main computer here. I've got my secondary monitor over here, which is while well, monitoring our feed here. I've actually got a, an iPad in front of me with some bullet points to remind me so I didn't mess up my notes in front of my camera here. Uh, I've got my iPhone. I've got my, uh, I've got my work iPad. I've got my, you know, so that was my personal iPad. I've got my work laptop over there. And in that closet, I've got an Android tablet. Uh, and I've got a uh, a little an old PC that I just that that's like for my science experiments, uh, yeah. So we we have got a lot of extra gear, uh, <laughs> but luckily those power bricks that you mentioned, a lot of people yeah a lot of people have them because they come with just about everything. Uh, I even have a power brick that came with uh, an old uh, flip phone. Uh, that uh, is still USB and it still works. Uh, it doesn't charge as fast. It's not as high voltage or uh, as, uh, as some of the new ones, but it still works. So 
you'd be surprised. Anything with a USB port that plugs into the wall, you know, you can usually charge with it. I have a question about the radio talking book. Yeah. And that is, um, will we need to send back the receiver we currently have? Uh, are they wanting us to do that? Uh, that's a really good question. So they are going to ask you to send it back. Uh, they have a record of everybody and they're going to send uh, instructions for sending it back, uh, I believe. Um, you, they, the radio, the radio wave version is going to work all the way through October. Uh, so they're not really, uh, so you can hold on to it till then. If you have the original box uh, that it was sent to you, that box actually has a return uh, label uh, in that box. So you could put it back in, fold it up. And you actually, if you, if they have it covered in plastic, a label, you can pull off, you flip it over and slide it back in and tape it. And, and actually the, the mail, you can leave it with your regular mail and they'll actually pick it up uh, and take it as well. Uh, but otherwise, they'll, I believe they're going to be sending uh, some more detailed instructions. Uh, but that's a, that's a good question because, yeah, there's going to be, as of the end of October, uh, a lot of those are not going to work anymore. They're disconnecting uh, that radio signal. Uh, and there's that's a, the reason why they're doing that's a little bit more complicated. I can, if people are really curious, I can actually probably have someone uh, come on and, and talk about that in detail. But uh, uh, yeah, keep hold on until October. You'll get instructions. If not, grab the original box and you can use that to send back. All right, so we're coming up on just about an, a, an hour here. I wanted to keep this focused and to the point, and uh, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, I'm very, I'm, I'm going to have to review all, how all this panned out. Uh, I'm going to be hoping to take the recording of this and, uh, and, and posting it uh, for people who were not able to attend. I had someone who uh, mentioned that they wanted to, but had a medical appointment. So we're going to try posting these online. Uh, we're, I'm going to assess about how long it took me to do everything and figure out when we can do this again, maybe set up some regular appointments. Um, if you do have bigger topics or questions, you weren't able to unmute yourself because I know there's always technical problems. I know we've got a couple of people on the phone and that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, and you have questions you're like, I would really like you to address that. Uh, then uh, please, please, please uh, call in that number uh, again. And I'm going to put that back up and I'm going to say that one more time. Uh, that number that you can call in to get questions on the on the show is 320-428-0122. I'm going to give that one more time, nice and slow. That number is 320-428-0122. If you call that number, you'll just get an answering machine. Give us your question and, uh, and, and we'll put you on a future episode of what did we learn this week? So thanks again for joining us. Thanks for dealing with any weird technical glitches or blips that happen along the way. Uh, and uh, and stay safe, stay well, and uh, have a uh, have a, a good Labor Day weekend coming up. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>